Chances are, if you've looked at the new AP Lit and AP Lang rubrics that were released in 2019, you've noticed that each of the essays is now on a one to six scale, and one of those points is the thesis point. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what a defensible thesis is, because this term is not actually new. The College Board has used this term on the AP History rubrics, and now it's being applied to English. So we're gonna talk about what this actually means and how you earn that point. That way you can work toward a higher scoring essay. So the first thing that we need to understand is that it is one one of six points and you either get the point or you don't. So it's incredibly crucial that the students know how to achieve this point because quite frankly, it's one of the things that you have the most control over when you're writing an essay. So what exactly is a thesis? I feel like we teach kids what a thesis is in like, I don't know, upper elementary school or middle school, but sometimes the concept just doesn't stick. So a thesis is actually basically just the argument that you're going to make. And so even if you're doing something like a rhetorical analysis, you're still arguing something. You are making a claim that you intend to prove in the essay. Now, technically speaking, according to the rubric, you don't actually have to prove your thesis. The thesis point is there and it is separate from the evidence and comments. Commentary. So if you make a thesis and don't actually prove it, they don't take away that point. They're just looking for, do you have a claim that you can defend? That being said, the whole point of this is to prove your thesis. According to the rubric, the thesis statement can be anywhere in the essay, at least for AP English. For AP History, I believe it has to either be in the intro or the conclusion. That being said, I think most students prefer to put it as the last sentence of the intro because it just makes sense to put it there. It's telling the reader what to expect in your essay and what argument you're going to prove. So if you can do that earlier on, it usually makes for a clearer structure. Now, that's not to say that it can't be done in other locations, but to be honest, as a teacher, that's where I tell to look for it. So I personally encourage my students to put it in the introduction. The College Board uses the term defensible thesis, not just thesis. So it's really important that we know what they're looking for when they say defensible. So first of all, we know what it means to defend something and the suffix I-B-L-E is just like A-B-L-E, like you're able to do it. So in this case, you have to defend your thesis. You have to be able to justify or prove your thesis throughout your essay. You have to have a claim that is unique and that can be proven. It's really important to emphasize the fact that the rubric says that a defensible thesis is not just restating or rephrasing the prompt. And I think this is important because a lot of times that's what students do because that's what they've been told to do in earlier grades. So oftentimes students are told to restate the question in their answer and that works for lower grades, but it's not appropriate for AP English. What they're looking for is your own analysis, your own interpretation of the document that you're reading, your own unique argument, whatever the task is. And so to create that, it's really important that you don't just restate the prompt, because if you do, you're basically just regurgitating what you've already been told. You're kind of like copying it. It's why they don't want you to summarize either, because that's not a higher level skill. So when you come up with a thesis, it's going to be really important that you don't just replace the prompt in your thesis. And looking at the rubric as a whole, you're going to notice that there are up to four points available for evidence and commentary. In order to score well in this category, it's really important that your evidence and commentary actually proves your thesis. So evidence can be done in the form of direct quotation or a paraphrase, and commentary is your analysis. So it's really important that you not only have a thesis, but you actually prove your thesis in the body paragraphs. Part of the reason that I believe the College Board doesn't want you to actually restate or rephrase the prompt is because these prompts are meant to be very open-ended. As the years have progressed, the prompts have become even more open-ended than they used to be. And this, in general, helps students because it allows more freedom of thought. However, if you just restate the prompt that's already kind of open-ended, your thesis appears very vague. So one thing that you're going to want to do is to create a clear, specific argument. This example shows what it looks like when a student rephrases the prompt. So you'll notice that there are some very vague terms here, and the student would do better to add some specific information. So first of all, it says multiple rhetorical strategies. Okay, which ones? I encourage my students not to even use the word rhetorical strategies in their thesis statement because if you actually tell the rhetorical strategies or the choices that the author has made, that is much more specific and your reader knows what rhetorical strategies are. So you don't need to say rhetorical strategies such as and then list them. The other thing is you don't want to just say purpose or message or other words that could be in the prompt because that doesn't actually tell anything. So you want to make sure that if you know what the purpose is, why they're doing it, you need to explicitly say so. That is a much stronger thesis than just saying to achieve his message or to present his case. 
I have found that sentence frames have actually helped my students become stronger writers because it gives them a model to follow. So I've included an example here. This is for rhetorical analysis, specifically for either a speech or a letter. However, you could easily adapt this to an essay as well. And you can also change this a little bit and modify it to fit poetry, short fiction, or a novel if you're doing AP Lit. So the big difference with AP Lit and AP Lang, in my opinion, is that Lang focuses more on purpose at least for rhetorical analysis, whereas the analysis in AP Lit is more based on theme or characterization, things like that. So the sentence frame is the top part, and basically you just plug in the words that fit. Now, there are going to be times when you need to change the order a little bit, and that's absolutely okay. And there's some times where you can omit parts of this because you might not know that information or you might want to disclose it elsewhere in the essay. That's also fine. The important thing here is that this provides a clear claim that would tell the reader what the essay is going to be about, and it also gives the student a concrete plan for how to address the rest of the essay. The previous sentence frame deals with analyzing a passage. However, on the AP Lang exam, that doesn't really apply to the synthesis or the argument essay. In that case, this sentence frame is much more useful. This is a counter argument sentence frame, and I've actually already made a video on this, so I will link it in the I cards above and also in the description box below. But basically what I like about this is it allows students to examine both sides of the issue, but present their own claim. If you watch any AP history videos on YouTube about how to write a thesis or how to write a DBQ or anything like that, chances are eventually you're gonna hear the name John Irish. And so what they're talking about when they talk about a John Irish thesis is actually the same thing as a counter argument thesis. And I have found that students who take AP Lang and AP US history at the same time tend to feel very comfortable with this sentence frame because I teach it in my classroom and our APUSH teacher teaches it as well. So there are major differences with what AP history teachers are looking for in their essays versus AP English teachers. But this sentence frame is one overlap that I find incredibly important. One of the downsides when the College Board redesigns a course is that information comes out in pieces. So at the time that I'm recording this video, we have the rubrics, but we don't actually have a correlation between here's an essay, here's what it looks like on the one to six scale. However, if you look at the new rubric and the previous rubrics, there's lots of overlap in the wording. And so my recommendation would be to look at the release samples that previously scored a six or higher on the one to nine scale, presumably based on the wording and the correlation between scores, those essays would have a defensible thesis. One of the aha moments that I have had as a teacher in trying to help my students write more effective essays is that concluding sentences can be absolutely crucial. Now, some might disagree with this and say that it's really formulaic, but I have found that students who actually use a concluding sentence to their body paragraph to refer back to their thesis tend to write a stronger essay because it's kind of like the bow on top of the present. And if you look at the rubric, you realize that they want you to prove your thesis. That's what a defensible thesis is. And the body paragraphs are where you do that. You prove it in the body paragraphs. So it's really important that everything wraps up neatly. You don't want to restate your thesis word for word in the concluding sentence of your body paragraph. So the concluding sentence is the last sentence of the body paragraph but you do want to at least reference your topic sentence or your thesis. You want your argument to be very cohesive. If you are an AP Lit or AP Lang student who is struggling with the written portion of the exam, I've got some other videos on my channel that I think can help you, so I will link those here. And if you're not subscribed yet, please don't forget to do so and turn on your notifications because I will be posting new content about how to prepare for the AP Lang exam and the AP Lit exam throughout the school year, and you're not gonna wanna miss that.